Hi, if you don't know me, my name is Kelly Chang. I recently graduated this spring from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign with a major in advertising, a minor in public relations, and not a minor in CS. People like to tell me things like, oh, you're so successful, or oh, you're so put together, and I don't know, I mean, thank you. That's very sweet of you to say, but this could not be further from the truth. And I've said this before, I don't ever want to paint myself in a light that's better than I actually am. So this is a story time sort of series that I'm going to be starting on my channel. Basically, I just want to tell you about different times in my life where I failed, because my goal from all of this is to normalize failure. I really believe that success doesn't exist without failure and once you're able to welcome it, appreciate it, then that's when you're really gonna start to go places. I'm gonna tell you a story today where in my eyes is one of the biggest failures I've experienced. It was one of the greatest disappointments in my life, the time when I felt the most stupid and incapable. And you already know what that story is based on the title of this video. I've mentioned here and there in my videos about how I used to minor in CS and I'm not anymore, obviously. So today I'm gonna tell you the story behind why. And surprise, surprise, it's not just because I'm bad at math. Well, yeah, it is kind of because I'm bad at math, but th there's a lot more to the story than that. Well, first we're gonna start off with why I picked it up in the first place. So, hi, if you don't know me, my name is Kelly Tang. I recently graduated this spring from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign with a major in advertising, a minor in public relations, and not a minor in CS. So by the way, if you haven't already, please click the like and subscribe button. But anyways, like I said, I'm not an engineering major, never was or plan to be. However, during the summer after my sophomore year, I was inspired. I guess I had suddenly realized that my major was not quite as useful as I had thought. Okay, well, I don't want to say that, but basically, I hadn't really learned any technical skills in all of college yet, and my institutionalized education was coming to an end in only two more years. Okay, if I want to learn a new skill, then CS is really good, right? My brother majored in CS at Berkeley, both of my parents are engineers, my boyfriend at the time was a CS major at UAUC, and a lot of my sorority sisters were also CS majors, so, you know, it made a lot of sense. Like, if I needed help, there's gonna be plenty of people who can help me. Plus, of course, I love technology. I love everything online and digital and media, and combined with advertising, CS can be very, very powerful. On top of that, CS at UAUC is top notch. Like, I'm, I think UAUC is one of the top schools in the country for CS. And I already go to UAUC. What, what a perfect opportunity. Surprisingly, to minor in CS, you actually don't even need to apply. They took down all barrier to entry because apparently finishing the minor is so hard that most students will end up dropping it before they even complete it. Despite this, I still experienced quite a bit of friction getting into CS. Well, first of all, I picked it up as a junior, and since there's six classes to take, it's virtually impossible for me to finish it. I was willing to take a class over the summer and then double up my senior year. If I really busted my ass and tried, I really could get it done. Okay, let's talk about the first CS class I took. CS 125. 9am, Follinger. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I can't even tell you how excited I was for this class. I felt like a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed freshman again, so ready to start something new, and I literally woke up early every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday so I could go and sit in the front row like a fucking nerd. I know, I was that bitch. They say that your first programming class is your hardest one because programming is a language. It's literally like learning a new language. And the hardest part is being able to wrap your mind around these kinds of concepts for the first time. Yo, understanding what objects were really fucked me up. I'm gonna be honest, this class was brutal. I've literally never put in that much effort into a class before and frankly, I don't think I ever have since. I remember thinking every single week how whatever we're learning, I don't understand how we could get any more complicated than this. But you know what? Guess what? Every single week, it got more complicated. And mind you, this is my first class, like intro to CS. I don't even know what the fuck goes on in this 400 level classes. The worst part is, there's a bunch of nerds who've been teaching themselves programming since like middle school. They'll ace every test, the whole work assignments are a breeze, they leave discussion in like 10 minutes, and some of them even like to do extra work or do some fancy programming tricks or whatever in their MPs for like literally no reason. They just want to like challenge themselves, which I'm not saying like this is a bad thing. Honestly, that's impressive. Props to you. For the first two months of this class, I cried almost every single day. I had an excellent essential crisis on whether or not I should drop the class because if I continued, there would be a chance that it would end up taking my GPA and the drop date was coming up soon, October 19th. So after that date, I'd either have to drop this entire endeavor or be stuck in the class and potentially fail. So this is my existential crisis, okay? Like October 19th was a state that was looming over my head. It was like I was counting down the days until I had to face the wrath of God of the UAUC registration portal. I struggled a lot in this class and it was a huge blow to my self-esteem because I know I'm not stupid, but I've never felt so dumb in my life. And a big reason why I was even questioning this so much was because my boyfriend at the time kept encouraging me to drop it. Like I said, he was a CS major, so I figured if I needed any help, he would be the main person I would go to, right? And he was supportive about me doing this at first, but once classes started and everything, it was a different story. Every time I asked him a question, he would tell me it was either stupid or irrelevant, which I don't know, maybe it was. He was a senior in CS, and this is my first exposure to CS ever, so of course I don't understand a lot of things, but I'm trying my hardest. Like, I'm asking 
asking the question is because I want to try and understand. But more often than not, instead of actually helping me, he would get mad at me or call me the R word. Even if we were studying in public, like if there were people like sitting basically right next to us. And that was very frustrating and embarrassing for me. Picking up this minor was something that was really important to me. To me, it was like I'm doing something good for myself. Like I'm finally doing something bigger with my life or making the most of my college career. I don't know, combining CS and advertising would take my career in a different direction. And it's innovative. It hasn't been done much in the past. But we would argue about this a lot, like almost every single day, about how basically he would say that engineering and problem solving and logic is something that only some people are wired well enough to be able to understand. He said that he can tell I'm not built for it, I'm not smart enough for it, it just wasn't for me and it was putting strain on our relationship so I should just drop it. So on top of my existential crisis and major blow to my self-esteem every day, I would have to argue with him and try to explain why this is important to me and why I want to do this and how yes, I am smart enough and I'm gonna continue to believe in myself even if you won't. I just feel like I shouldn't have to explain myself on why I want to learn something new, on why I think this would be good for my career, on why this is important to me. If I have any advice for you, it's to not let anyone tell you what you can or cannot do, especially if it has to do with your career or your future. And honestly, it was only really putting strain on our relationship because he wasn't willing to just slow down and actually try to explain this to me, you know, actually teach. And this is actually kind of a recurring theme. So, you know, besides from class and discussion, you can also go to office hours for help. I spent a ridiculous amount of time at office hours. I went almost every single day and it became my new home on campus. However, I would get very few questions answered or work done proportionate to the amount of time that I was spending there. And this is just because it's so packed. There's always so many people there and not enough TAs, especially on the day before an MP is due. There are so many people in there that you can't even get a seat to sit down. There would be multiple times when I would go and I would literally sit there and just raise my hand for like over 40 minutes like there's like no blood left in my arm and no one would help me so i just put my arm down and went home i'm not saying the office hours wasn't helpful at all it actually was quite helpful many occasions but i just needed more help and more time to understand these concepts than other people and i wasn't getting it from any of my friends so now you may ask well kelly why didn't you just ask for help from the other students of course i tried well okay when i was in this class all the people that i met they followed the stereotype and I'm sure you know what stereotype I'm talking about. So very often when I was in discussion or in office hours, I would literally be pissed because of how rude or gross or creepy some of these guys were. There are many occasions where someone would say something that's just socially unacceptable to my face. Um, sometimes they would even spit on me when they were talking. One time this guy read my text message conversation from the row behind me over my shoulder and then made a comment about my conversation that I was having with my friend. Some of them are so try hard that all they want to do is show off how smart they are are, interrupt you and talk over you or hog the attention of the TAs. Some people were also just not willing to share or willing to explain, but the people who actually were usually were just as close as me, so neither of us could help each other. I never made any friends in CS just because I genuinely felt like I couldn't relate to anyone that I met. I always felt really uncomfortable, like I stuck out like a sore thumb. On the first day of discussion, we did introductions and I was the oldest person in my class, everyone was a freshman. I was one of the few girls, obviously, and I was of course the only one who was in a creative major. Everyone was in CS or engineering or something related. One time I stayed up to discussion to ask some more questions because I didn't understand the concepts and then all these freshman boys started swarming around me to try and answer my questions but they were all talking over each other and not making any sense or explaining well at all. It was just very overwhelming. So yes, the stereotypes are true. If you're a female in STEM, you're gonna be one of the very few. If you exude any amount of estrogen whatsoever, <laughs> the boys will flock to you, okay? The memes are true. But of course there are plenty of people who are both intelligent and willing to help but Honestly, I guess sometimes I'm just too dumb to understand what they're saying. Because believe it or not, teaching complex subjects is really hard. Like I said, programming is a language and you know, teaching this kind of subject is comparable to teaching someone a new language. Students or these TAs are not really trained in that. I have no doubt that they understand the material, but it's a whole different thing to try and teach that to someone who has never been exposed to this material before. And especially to someone like me, who was very, very much right brain. So all of this is leading up to the first midterm. This midterm is important because how well I did in this midterm is gonna be a pretty strong determinant of whether or not I think I should drop this class. You do get to see your grade right away because you take the test on a computer and every single time I saw red flashes on the screen for all the questions I got wrong that was hit my self-esteem and it just did worse and worse and worse. So no surprise here, I bombed the midterm. But reassuringly, I, a lot of other students did too. After the midterm was over, I sulked back home so I could get back to work on my MP. But I was so disheartened, so I opened Reddit and I saw this letter that someone posted an open letter to CS125. I am not a CS major. In fact, I am not a major in any STEM field. I haven't even taken a math class since AP Calc in 2013, and I've never written a line of code until a month ago. However, I am not stupid. 
I can do all the homework in MPs, sometimes with a few tears. It just takes me time. I don't have an extensive background in coding or math like almost everyone else, so it just takes me longer. But in the end, I get it correct. But tell me why in a class when I'm learning to code for the first time that a whole letter grade is being held hostage for a simple mistake from a beginner like me. For those of you who are like, well, you were stupid for taking a CS class or just dropped the class, shut up. I am taking this class because I want to learn a goddamn skill that will probably help me in my future career and I refuse to drop it. Programming is a skill that everyone should learn and I'm trying my fucking hardest, so why are you gatekeeping so hard? Please, for the love of God, consider those of us who are new to programming, don't have the time to dedicate our entire lives to CS because it is not our major, and just want to learn a skill without wanting to die every week. I have never felt a Reddit post so hard in my life. I was sitting in the study room in my apartment reading this letter with tears streaming down my face. Even when I was reading it just now, I started getting choked up because I felt that so hard. This is exactly how I felt. Like this is not my major and this is my first time doing this and it seems like everyone is against me. I was just encouraged to know that I wasn't alone. <sighs> Well, that's not change the fact that I failed the midterm, so at this point, I could have dropped the class, but I decided to take a few more days to think about it. I discussed it with my brother and both my parents, and they encouraged me to go on. I even talked about it in class with one of my favorite professors, Patrick Vargas, for Advertising 478. At this point, I was so downhearted, and I just wanted to cry all the time. I was even trying to not cry as I was telling him my story, but what he taught me that day is that, yeah, logic is hard. It's not for everybody, but it's just like any other skill. Logic can be learned. Patrick probably has no idea, but that little pep talk he gave me that day really inspired me to keep going. The next day in class, our professor didn't teach. Instead, he gave us a little pep talk and it's one that I'm gonna remember for the rest of my life. Honestly, I don't even remember exactly what was said, but the message was really powerful. I believe it was along the lines of a similar experience that he had in college. After a really, really hard test, the professor urged the students to not give up their passion for the subject. I distinctly remember there was a very powerful visual of a ladder going up to the ceiling that was on the screen as he told his story. I was trying my best to not cry in the lecture hall, but honestly, those 50 minutes of words of encouragement were really what I needed to push me to keep going and give it my best shot. By the way, the professor's name is Jeffrey Challen. So Jeffrey Challen, if you're watching this, which he very well might be because I know he likes to keep up with the students online, which is another reason that makes him such a great professor. But I remember noticing that he got a decent amount of hate from students. Like you either loved him or you hated him. I heard that the professor that taught CS 125 before him was really, really good and he had really big shoes to fill. Well, I never knew the old professor or whoever taught CS 125 before, but objectively, I think that Jeff did an exceptional job. So Jeffrey Challen, if you're watching this, don't listen to the haters. They're just butthurt that they got a bad grade. You were one of my two favorite professors in all of college because it was very clear how passionate you were about this class and your students. You managed to keep everything organized and fair for hundreds of students and dozens of TAs. You made all of the information accessible and fairly paced. You encouraged your students and told us everything that we needed to hear. And you were open to criticism and look for new ways in which to improve the class. I don't know, I just feel like teachers are so underappreciated because good teachers are really hard to come by, but they are essential to this world. Even though I didn't end up continuing CS and it probably will never code again in my life, he still made a tremendous impact on my college experience in just one semester. Towards the end of this course, I did find a group of friends in Greek life who were also taking the class and yeah, we were able to help each other with homeworks and kind of on the MPs. I mean, everyone was kind of clueless there, but to me, it wasn't so helpful because by the end, I would just end up copying the answers and turning in the homework and not actually learning the material. However, Kim carried me in the final, God bless her soul. So yeah, you may be surprised, but I actually did end the class with an A. I was surprised too. The professor actually bases your grade off of I guess you could call it a curve, based on how much you knew about CS coming into the class. So in that way, the grading was actually really fair. It, if anything, it wasn't fair because of how nice it was, because I, I don't think I deserved an A, but thank you anyways. My self-esteem restored. I actually ended up taking two more CS classes, CS173 at UAUC, and then I took CS225 at a community college. The fall of my senior year, I took a 400 level elective, and it was like a CS and advertising combined topic, so it was really interesting to me, but Nonetheless, I still struggled a lot and understandably it was run very different than CS125 So I struggled to keep up and I ended up dropping the class So because I was already a senior, there's no way I would be able to finish three CS classes in my last semester It just didn't make sense. So that's why I dropped the minor entirely I filled out the drop form handed it into my visor and I cried in the car ride home Of course, I knew this was the right decision for me It was like a huge weight that was lifted off my chest But it still hurt because I was closing a chapter in my life I was closing the door to a potential career path that I was really excited about And this was something that I really wanted to prove to myself that I could do You know, prove my ex wrong Prove everybody wrong That I am smart enough to do this And I can do anything that I put my mind to But I guess what I learned is that it's just not for me And that's okay The truth is, if you want to be successful in engineering You just have to put a lot of time into it That's the only way Your success is going to be directly correlated to the number of hours that you put into it. And that's just something that I wasn't willing to do. I didn't want my college years to turn into me just crying all night at the library and then still failing the midterm. I never wanted to be a slave to academics. 
I've always said, I've said this before, I always want to live a well-rounded life. You know, still have a social life, get some damn sleep and not cry every day. And I was already not able to do that anyways because not to mention, during this time, I was also president of the United Greek Council, vice president, publicity chair, and recruitment chair for my sorority. Plus, I picked up a little for the first time. I was also working 15 hours a week at my job and running a photography business on the side and arguing every day with a toxic ex-boyfriend about why I'm not stupid. So, I was just very exhausted. I have had my fair share of mental breakdowns, believe me. But you know what? I've accepted this failure. Just because I'm not good at math doesn't mean that I don't have value as a person or that I'm not gonna contribute anything meaningful to this world. Actually, it just means that I was brave enough to give it my best shot anyways. And now that I know for sure that I'm not good at that kind of stuff, I was able to discover what I really am good at, and that's being creative. I have plenty of strengths and talents in those areas. I help people and put good into the world in my own way. And we should all find out what that way is for ourselves. And I feel like college is the best time to do that. I genuinely believe that that's what your purpose in life is. To discover and use your own unique strengths to make the world a better place in whatever way that may be. I hope the story wasn't like too depressing to you. That wasn't my intention. I actually was hoping it would be more inspiring. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. I would really appreciate it. Let me know if you want to hear more story times of my failures because I got a whole running list. Let me know which one I see next. Thanks for joining me in another video and I'll see you next one.